Is Elon Musk's Starlink changing the game for the entire African continent? From affordable internet to revolutionizing remote work, education, and even healthcare in rural areas in Africa. It's the beginning of a digital transformation that could skyrocket Africa's growth. But with great opportunities come big challenges. Will governments and telecom giants let it happen? Watch the video until the end to find out how Starlink could reshape Africa and how you could benefit from it. My name is Marvin. I've been living in Nairobi, Kenya for the past year and a half. I've been closely following the continent's developments, the significant changes happening across Africa, and I'm keeping you posted on investment opportunities on the continent. So let's dive into the topic. The African continent is home to over 1.5 billion people, yet a significant portion still lacks reliable internet access. As of 2022, only about 40% of the continent's population was connected to the internet. This digital divide is particularly strong in rural areas, where infrastructure development has lagged behind urban regions. In Kenya, where I've spent the last year and a half, internet services are quite strong and reliable, especially in urban centers. Even when Nairobi has a strong 5G network and fiber connection in a lot of areas, there are many cases of interruptions during peak hours, which can severely impact productivity. I've experienced this firsthand while working remotely, struggling with slow connection that hinders my ability to finish tasks. The challenges of high cost and inconsistent services are not unique to Kenya. During my travels to Zanzibar, Namibia and Uganda, I encountered similar issues with many individuals and businesses unable to rely on stable internet connections. The slow or not properly working internet connection can be an annoying factor when you're trying to hold meetings or get things done that require a stable connection. This situation situation highlights the urgent need for solutions that can bridge the connectivity gap across the continent. Why Starlink could solve this problem for the African continent? So Starlink aims to provide high-speed internet and that globally, particularly in underserved regions. The service utilizes the constellation of satellites to deliver internet access, which can overcome many obstacles faced by traditional internet providers. Unlike conventional methods that rely on ground-based infrastructure, Starlink satellite network offers a viable alternative for remote and rural areas where internet connectivity is still very poor. Even in urban areas where connection can be unstable or simply turned off by any institution if it causes problems for them. And even in this case, Starlink can be an advantage for the population. We just recently had that case here in Kenya where coincidentally, the internet connection suffered during heavy riots for a few days. Therefore, the primary selling point of Starlink is its potential to deliver high-speed internet with minimal latency that could free the population from dependency of government-owned telecoms. Users can expect fast speeds which can dramatically improve the online experience for activities such as streaming, gaming, or remote work. Moreover, with the lower cost structure, it can make internet access more affordable for the average user and even connect people in rural areas with the internet. So let us find out now what the potential impact on the country's development could be. First off, the implementation of Starlink could save the African country's time and a lot of money due to not having the need to build in the structures on the ground slowly by slowly. They can simply skip those steps and build out the internet connection to the best option available. This helps them to skip the learning phase that other countries already made and just go with the best option on the market. So it is very cost effective and efficient for those countries. Another significant impact of Starlink could be an economic growth for the continent. By providing lower cost, high speed internet, businesses can use this as a chance to thrive. Enhanced connectivity enables businesses to reach a broader market, engaging with customers online and streamline operations without any interruptions. I've observed how startups in Kenya's growing tech scene can capitalize on improved connectivity to enhance their offerings. A reliable internet connection could also support sectors like agriculture, where farmers can access real-time information about market prices, weather forecasts, and best practices. Also, could Starlink provide more opportunities for people living in rural areas to work remotely? Without having the need of moving to a bigger city, this can help them to support their local community. Education is another big area that stands to gain tremendously from improved internet access. The COVID-19 pandemic underscored the importance of remote learning, but many students in rural areas face barriers due to poor connectivity. With Starlink, students could access online resources participate in virtual classrooms and connect with educators globally. I have heard countless stories of how difficult these times were for students that did not have the opportunity to connect to a proper internet connection. And this still happens up to today. By enabling more reliable connectivity, Starlink could help bridge the educational divide, allowing students from remote areas to compete on a more equal basis. Reliable internet access can also revolutionize healthcare services across the continent. Telehealth has become increasingly important, particularly in regions with limited access to medical professionals. With better connectivity, healthcare providers can offer consultations, follow-ups, and even remote trainings in real time.
time. During my travel to Namibia, I saw so many people living in areas so far away from the next city and with the proper internet connection, they would have been able to get assistance without the need of traveling several hours just to see a doctor. Better internet connectivity can spur a wave of innovation and entrepreneurship. Countries like Kenya, which already have a thriving tech ecosystem, could grow further on their own and attract more investment. Entrepreneurs could leverage reliable internet to develop new applications, services and business models that cater to the local needs. I've witnessed the creativity and resilience of local entrepreneurs who are eager to make a difference. Improved connectivity could help them to unlock their potential, allowing them to innovate without the constraints of unreliable internet. So what are the market opportunities emerging from Starlink's entry into Africa? The introduction of Starlink opened up a wide area of opportunities for businesses, entrepreneurs and industries across the whole continent, driven by the increased demand for reliable and affordable internet services. Here are some of the key areas that stand to benefit. So let's start with the first one. I think the first one is infrastructure development. With Starlink offering satellite-based internet, there will be a growing need for complementary infrastructure, such as local data centers, tech hubs and digital ecosystems to support the rising internet usage. Businesses can take advantage of this by developing cloud storage services, providing cybersecurity solutions and building security solutions and building local internet exchange points to reduce latency and enhance connectivity. A second area could be the e-commerce growth. So improved internet access will fuel the expansion of e-commerce across the African continent. As more people gain access to faster and cheaper internet, the demand for online shopping, digital payment systems and logistical services will definitely increase. And this represents a significant opportunity for both local and international businesses to create platforms that cater to this growing consumer base. Local startups focusing on e-commerce can capitalize on the shift, particularly by targeting underserved markets in rural and semi-urban areas. As internet connectivity becomes more reliable and widespread, remote work will become a more viable option for African professionals. This presents opportunities for businesses to develop co-working spaces, productivity tools and communication platforms that support remote workers and digital nomads. And the fourth thing I think is education and e-learning platforms. With better internet access, the demand for e-learning and online education platforms will definitely rise. This presents opportunities for educational tech companies to expand their services across Africa. Platforms that offer skill development, vocational training and formal education could benefit from a larger user base. Additionally, partnerships between tech companies and educational institutions could enhance the quality and reach of education in rural and underserved areas. And there's also the fact that tourism and hospitality could grow from it as well. The tourism and hospitality industries could leverage improved connectivity to market their services globally and enhance guest experiences. Hotels, restaurants and tour operators in more remote areas will have reliable connection, which is a major draw for digital nomads and international travelers. Businesses that cater to the sector offering digital booking systems, online marketing and virtual tourism experience would see significant growth as Starlink expands. But with all those upsides, what are the challenges ahead? Several challenges need to be addressed for Starlink to succeed in Africa. So the first one are regulatory challenges. Starlink must navigate complex regulations across different African countries to gain market access. Many African nations have established monopolies in telecommunications which are resisting the competition. This could complicate Starlink's ability to operate effectively. And just to name a few countries that are restricting Starlink the market entry, the first one is South Africa, then there's Senegal, and then there's the DRC. But there are many more I was reading about. Governments need to create supportive policies that foster digital inclusion. For instance, even if Kenya has already adopted Starlink, it still wants to protect its local players. Striking a balance between fostering innovation and maintaining existing market structures will be very crucial for the success of Starlink in the African continent. The next thing is the cost of the equipment. The initial startup cost for Starlink is around 350 US dollars here in Kenya. And this is still a barrier for a lot of users here on the ground. Making financing options or subsidies available will be vital for broader adoption, especially in lower income communities. The prices are already coming down. When Starlink first launched in Kenya, the upfront cost was almost $700. So the more users can get here on the ground, the cheaper it will become. The same can be applied for other African countries. I was even reading on that Starlink works on a router-free setup. And that could again cut the cost and make it more affordable to its consumers. And what geographical limitations does it have? While Starlink aims for global coverage, geographical features can pose challenges. Urban areas with dense buildings may face signal issues, limiting the effectiveness of satellite connections. Ensuring widespread access in both urban and rural settings will require strategic planning, investment and further development. Then there is the point of public awareness and education. Many potential users may not fully understand how satellite internet works or how it can benefit them. Educating the public about Starlink and its advantages will be critical for their new adoption. Other big players in the local communities have been in the market for longer periods and are already known. It could take some time for the people to adopt the new technology and to understand it until they start implementing it more and more. So reflecting on my own experience, 
experiences across Kenya, Zanzibar, Namibia, and Uganda, I can see the unique challenges regarding the internet access. In rural Kenya, for example, I often struggle with connectivity while working remotely. The inconsistent service made it difficult to stay connected with clients and to do tasks that simply needed a proper connection. While trying to work in Zanzibar was always a struggle to find a place with a reliable connection. Even the biggest hotels and resorts did not have a proper internet connection. And this was one of the factors that made me feel excited to leave the island despite its beauty. If this could have been solved, I for sure know that many people would plan a trip or stay even longer on the island. As I met many people, they're going through the same struggle. And I can imagine from the things that I heard from locals of other African countries, that they would also benefit from a better connection for the tourist industries, but also to push the local economies. In conclusion, the arrival of Starling in Africa is more than just a tech upgrade. It's a crucial moment that could redefine how people live, work, and do business across the African continent. By providing affordable and reliable internet access, particularly in underserved rural areas, Starlink has the potential to bridge the digital divide and unlock economic opportunities. However, while the possibilities are amazing, the journey isn't without its obstacles. Regulatory challenges and competition with established telecom providers will shape the rollout for sure. Especially governments will need to cooperate to give their countries the chance to innovate and harness the full potential Starlink could bring for its residents. In the end, I think the future of Africa's digital landscape is bright, but its success will depend on how well the continent can navigate the challenges ahead. The rise of Starlink offers a glimpse into a new, connected area where the possibility seems endless. Now is the time to watch closely, adapt and seize the opportunities as Africa steps into a digital future like never before. Will you use Starlink once it becomes available in your country or are you already using it? Let me know in the comments down below and watch some of the other videos I added here to get more insights on the African developments.